This lesson assumes you have some familiarity with Stephens' method for finding the root of a single equation. Check out my earlier video. Recall there are two versions of Stephens' method. The equation on the left I've already generalized in another video. This video will be all about the equation on the right. Hello Internet, this is Oscar Lees again, and in this lesson I'll be going over the history and background, as well as showing an example of the method, as well as providing some discussion. I would also recommend having seen my earlier video on Newton's method for solving systems of nonlinear equations. Let's turn to J.F. Traub's book, Iterative Methods for the Solution of Equations. In it, Traub writes, Consider the function, this function, where beta is an arbitrary parameter. When beta is equal to 1, that is Stephenson's method. He goes on to say, There are a number of ways in which we could generalize iteration functions which require no derivative evaluations. We restrict ourselves to the generalizations of the two iteration functions discussed in section 8.6, giving this equation. Writing J is, of course, an approximation of the Jacobian matrix. Let H denote the inverse of J, then the generalization is given by this equation. I know it looks a little complicated, but bear with me. In a class of Stephenson type iterative methods for nonlinear systems by Soleimani et al., the authors write Traub in the Pioneer book the one we went over, introduced another tool named as J of X of H to estimate the Jacobian matrix and to derive Stephenson's method for nonlinear systems as follows, which looks like Newton's method, wherein J looks like this equation and H as the diagonal. Notice the notation is slightly different, but this is actually easier to work with. Let's simplify things. Let's start with Newton's method. Note again, we can rewrite Newton's method to take the inverse of J. J is our Jacobian matrix, which you can find using partial derivatives. But with Traub's approach, there are no derivatives. We instead need another matrix called H, which is a diagonal containing the values stored in F of X. We'll need each of the columns in that matrix. And to find the inverse of H, we simply take one over every term. Let's assume our function that we're evaluating is x squared minus x minus 1. This is only one variable, but it'll still work. We'll need a starting value, which is 2, and plug everything into f. We'll also compute h from that, and then h inverse. Then plug everything into our equation for j, and solve it using Newton's method to give our next value for x1, which is 1.75. These two versions are doing the same thing. Our normal version of Stephens' method on the left and our generalized version on the right, which we're just going over. If you kept iterating, all of these terms would match. Let's use our generalized form to solve a system of nonlinear equations. We'll use again this example from my earlier videos on these topics. Our first step is, as always, to rewrite it in terms of zero. Then we'll need one starting point. Let's take the example 1.52 evaluated looking like this. We'll need the diagonal matrix H, which we just plug in, and then compute the inverse of H. We'll then use all this information to compute our Jacobian approximation using Stephenson's method, giving this result for the Jacobian. Then we apply Newton's method using that approximated Jacobian, resulting in the value of 1.58 and 1.432, looking like this when we plug everything into f. We then use our new value for x to compute h and h inverse, which we then plug everything into our equation for j. I've saved you the steps to give this approximation of the Jacobian. Afterwards, we use Newton's method with our approximated j to give our next value for x, which looks like this. Very close. One thing to note about Stephens' method is that the closer you are to the solution, the better the approximation of the Jacobian will be. Here's our example from last time and its actual Jacobian. If we plugged in every point of Stephens' method in our sequence and compare that to the actual Jacobian, you'll note that the closer you are to the solution, 
the better the approximation. The important takeaways of Stefan's method is that it finds a solution to a system of nonlinear equations with a quadratic order. Historically, it was found by J.F. Traub, and it approximates the Jacobian using that equation. It also solves a linear system or a Nordson matrix the same way that Noon's method does, and it has a single starting value for x compared to generalized secant method, which had multiple values. The method also works best when you're near a solution, and because it doesn't use the actual Jacobian, it's known as a quasi-Newton method. Definitely check out my other video on generalized aiken stephenson method, and the code that I wrote for this video will be hosted on GitHub. As always, thank you for watching. I do plan on making at least two more videos solving systems of nonlinear equations, including one on Broyden's method, so definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Also, be sure to let me know your thoughts on this video, and again, Thank you for watching.